Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 20th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Remco published a diary collecting some of the resources regarding the Fragment Smack attack and essentially just summarizing what we know about this attack so far. I mentioned it last week. That's this denial of service attack in recent versions of Linux that's triggered by IP fragments. You don't actually need to necessarily apply the patch to protect yourself from this problem. You can also just reduce some of the fragment buffers back to the values actually they had before this became an issue. Then I have another item that actually may have belonged into last week's uh, podcast and that's a Faxploit. That's an exploit that Checkpoint found against a number of HP multifunction devices. But what was sort of neat different about it was that in order to exploit this vulnerability, you have to send a fax to that device via a good old phone line. Now, one of the reasons I didn't actually cover it last week was the Checkpoint release about this uh, used a lot of hype in it. Yes, it's a problem. Yes, in particular, large companies still use faxes. A lot of small companies too, I know. A lot of contractors and such, uh, construction contractors use still faxes. But there's sort of another facet to this that a reader sort of alerted me to, and that's that, yes, HP has released updates for these machines, but if you're not using Windows, you probably have a hard time applying this patch. The patch so far has only been released as a Windows executable, so to apply it from a Mac, you essentially need to somehow boot Windows, which means you first need to buy a Windows license. Yes, a lot of Mac users have, for example, VMware Parallels or tools like this installed to run Windows, and they will work to apply the patch, but still not very nice of HP to totally miss out on all non-Windows users when it comes to these patches. In particular, since drivers are being released for these operating systems, so yes, they are supported. HP is supporting these operating systems just not when it comes to patching the device. With last week's Microsoft update, we got two patches for vulnerabilities that were already spotted in the wild. One of them was a visual basic script exploit and wasn't really clear which exploit in the wild they were referring to. Well, uh, we got more detail now from Chihu 360, the Chinese research firm. They found this particular vulnerability being exploited by what they call the Dark Hotel Group, which is commonly associated with North Korean government actors. Now, interesting also here, they're called Dark Hotel in part because one of their operating modes is to compromise hotel networks and then use the hotel's Wi-Fi network to inject these malicious scripts into users' browser sessions if they identified a particular guest in the hotel as being valuable enough to actually use a survey exploit like this to target them. Now, again, this was a survey until it was patched last week. In an Explorer 11, by the way, while it supports Visual Basic Script, it doesn't parse it by default. But uh, what you need to do then is load, for example, an Office document that's being parsed by IE11. And yes, then Visual Basic Script may execute and the exploit will work. Another quick side note on this, I like to link uh, to the original work uh, that actually describes these vulnerabilities. So one of the links will be to Jihu 360, but uh, I only found a Chinese language version of the blog post that describes the details of this exploit. Trend Micro also wrote about this, so I will, in addition, link to an English version by Trend Micro, and I believe they pretty much uh, cover the same ground as Chihu 360 covers. Maybe Chihu 360 has a little bit more technical details. 
And then as part of all the vulnerabilities released at Black Hat, we got yet another, and I think quite important one, a deserialization vulnerability in PHP. This one was discovered by Sam Thomas of Sakarma Labs, and it does affect the FAR, P-H-A-R, stream wrapper. To exploit this vulnerability, the application needs to allow an attacker to open one of these FAR archives. These are essentially sort of archived PHP code. Now, it is sufficient to just, for example, call the file exist command in PHP on a FAR archive in order to trigger the remote code execution. Drupal, by the way, is vulnerable to this. And as far as I know, there hasn't been a patch released yet. Typo 3 was vulnerable, but a patch has been released. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.